Hello, everybody. Um, all right, so the purpose of this, um, this video is just to do a quick introduction for you of the urinary system. We're going to run through some of the anatomy of the kidney um, and some other parts of the urinary system here uh, today. Um, and then we'll probably get into the physiology of the urinary system um, in another video. It's something we actually probably wouldn't have done if we were in class. Um, so, but because we're not able to dissect, uh, I think we will do that, um, you know, and it'll maybe give you a little leg up next year if you know, or in the future, if you take anatomy and physiology again, and you know some of this that you wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to. So maybe there's a silver lining there, I don't know. But um, anyway, I wanted to get into a little bit about uh, the urinary system with you. Um, the urinary system uh, sits here in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Uh, you've got your kidneys here. They're along the dorsal wall of the, um, of the abdomen um, towards the back of the body. The adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidneys in the human. Um, the renal artery brings blood to the kidneys and the renal veins bring drain blood away from the kidneys. Those the renal arteries are going to uh, branch off of the abdominal aorta here and the renal veins are, are draining blood back into the inferior vena cava. Then you've got the ureters that uh, drain the urine that is formed in the kidneys uh, down to the urinary bladder here that sits um, anterior to the uterus and vagina in females and um, uh, anterior to the rectum in males. Um, and then you have the urethra, which drains urine from the body after the urinary bladder stores it. So those are your basic parts. The kidneys that make our urine by filtering our blood, um, the ureters that drain that urine down to the urinary bladder where it is stored until it's ready to be excreted from the body th out through the urethra. Uh, and if you remember back to our histology unit, we are going to find transitional epithelium throughout the urinary system to allow these different structures to expand uh, as they fill. Um, <clears throat> so um, kidney anatomy, right? A few things to point out. First of all, the renal hilium is the indentation here of the kidney near the in, right near the middle of the kidney. It's not, it's not this yellowish beige colored stuff here. It's just the indentation of the brown kidney. The, so that middle part of the kidney that kind of bends in right there. That's the renal hilium. That's where blood vessels enter and leave, lymph vessels enter and leave, and nerves enter and leave the kidney right through uh, that renal hilium there. The ureters also exit the kidney at the renal hilium. The renal capsule uh, surrounds and protects the kidney. Here's the renal capsule, and I put this picture in. You would have seen this, uh, it's this connective tissue here, the rat that's been peeled away off the top of the outside of the kidney here. Um, it surrounds and protects the kidney. It helps to maintain that shape. Um, and it's surrounded by a fatty tissue for cushioning, which we would have seen in the rabbit. Maybe you saw a little bit of it in the pig. Um, so that is one thing I wanted to point out to you was that renal capsule. Um, all right, uh, the other parts of the kidney that you should know about as we cut through it, right? This is a section through the kidney, a sagittal section through the kidney. Uh, the renal cortex is this outer region of the kidney right here, where, and this is where your blood gets actually filtered, is in this cortex area, uh, and it's filtered by special structures, uh, special coiled up tubes called nephrons that the next video will discuss. Um, and then we have what's called the renal medulla, which is the inner part of the kidney. So this is an actual dissected sheep kidney. Your renal cortex is this outer area here. This is your renal capsule, this thin layer right out here. This is the renal cortex. And then the renal medulla is this darker area. It looks a little uh, smoother, uh, maybe a little wetter, I guess, in this picture, um, whereas the renal cortex looks a little grainier. You can see it here. So this is the renal medulla. That's the inner part of the kidney. And, and then we will see these renal pyramids here and here. Um, as we take a look, those renal pyramids are striated tri triangular structures that you will see th running throughout the kidney. They're striated, actually the striations or stripes, if you remember that that's what striations means, uh, are actually caused by the little nephron tubes that run through those uh, renal pyramids. Um, the renal pelvis is this funnel-shaped basin. It's this yellowish area here, and it's funnel-shaped right here. Uh, that collects the urine that is formed in the nephrons. Um, and then we have the renal artery that brings oxygenated blood to the kidney that is going to be getting filtered 
uh, and the renal vein brings deoxygenated blood away from the kidney. So your kidneys have several functions. They regulate our blood volume and composition. Um, so they regulate how much blood we have by um, controlling how much water um, gets reabsorbed from the urine that is being formed. Um, so it determines how much water leaves the body in your urine and how much comes back into the bloodstream. So the more water that gets retained, the higher the blood volume, the less water the kidneys retain, the lower the blood volume goes. It also, they also regulate um, how much of uh, different ions and metabolites remain in our blood versus get excreted in our urine. How much sodium, how much uh, chloride ions um, get excreted in the urine versus how many get retained in the blood. Uh, it helps to regulate blood pressure. Um, one, by regulating blood volume. So the higher the blood volume, the higher the blood pressure, the lower the blood volume, the, typically the lower the blood pressure. Plus the kidneys release that hormone renin that leads to those series of reactions that end up um, in causing vasoconstriction. So if we uh, reduce the size of the tube that blood is flowing through, that will also raise the pressure that the blood is exerting on the walls of that tube as it passes through um, those tubes. Uh, it helps to regulate blood pH by regulating how much, uh, how many hydrogen ions are excreted versus remain in the blood. Um, the, the more hydrogen ions in the blood, the lower the pH of our blood goes. The fewer hydrogen ions in the blood, the higher our pH goes. A little chemistry acid base review for you there. Uh, the kidneys participate in red blood cell formation. If you remember earlier, um, we learned that the kidneys produce the hormone erythropoietin, EPO, which stimulates the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. Your kidneys synthesize vitamin D to help uh, with calcium absorption, uh, and then they excrete waste products and foreign substances from the body. Uh, the ureters, okay, so that, that was the kidneys with the form, urine formation. Then the ureters uh, are going to take that urine and transport it to the urinary bladder. Um, they actually do uh, have muscular walls that squeeze that urine from the kidneys to the urinary bladder. It's not just gravity that causes that urine uh, to end up in the urinary bladder. Because if you think about it, um, when you wake up in the morning, what's something you usually have to do? Well, you usually have to go to the bathroom. Why do you have to go to the bathroom? The body's been making urine while you've been sleeping, uh, and that's been getting transported to your urinary bladder. Well, you're laying flat when you're sleeping, I would assume. Um, and so it's not gravity that's drawing that urine to the urinary bladder. The ureters are actually uh, squeezing and pushing that urine to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder then is going to store that urine um, until you're ready to urinate and it expels the urine into the urethra. And then the urethra simply just discharges the urine from the body. Uh, now, uh, introduce a new word, I think, probably to you, this micturition, which is a fancy word that basically means voiding, urinating, emptying the bladder, peeing, whatever you want to call it, right? That micturition is the fancy uh, physiological term for urinating. You should know that the control center the mic of micturition uh, is in the brain is located in the pons, so the pons controls um, micturition. Um, although it is heavily influenced by other higher centers in the brain. The parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system uh, controls uh, voiding or uh, urinating, uh, whereas the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system inhibits micturition. So the pons is where um, the control center for micturition or urinating is located. You don't need to worry about all this other pathway stuff here, the inhibition and stimulation stuff here. Um, all right, and the last thing I wanna look at here, uh, your urine, normally uh, it's going to contain some inorganic constituents other than, uh, other than water. It's gonna have chloride ions, sulfate ions, SO4, two minus, it's gonna have calcium ions, uh, inorganic phosphate ions, so PO4, three minus phosphate ions, um, and it's going to have ammonia. It's also, those are all going to be inorganic um, uh, waste products that the body will get rid of. Uh, we're gonna, your body's going to produce some organic waste products. Also, urea uh, is an organic waste product that's actually formed from the metabolism and digestion of proteins. Uh, uric acid, creatinine, which is formed from the uh, waste products of creatine phosphate, which is found in your muscles. Um, and creatine phosphate serves as a storage area of phosphate ions 
that can be added to ADP to make more ATP in your muscles so that your muscles can keep contracting. Uh, and then these last two, don't worry about those two. Um, but um, sometimes you, know, you might have problems with your urinary system uh, functioning properly. Uh, so you have to go in for a urinalysis, right? The doctor tells you to go pee in a cup. Uh, and then they do an analysis to check and see uh, if there's anything wrong with your kidney function um, or with your urinary system. So uh, if they do that urinalysis and find albumin in there, albumin is a uh, protein that's found in your blood plasma. Um, and if that's in there, um, that, tells your, um, that tells your doctor that you've got damage to the nephrons, those uh, units that filter your blood within the kidney. Um, proteins are never supposed to leave the plasma and, and end up in your urine. The protein molecules are huge, way too big to be filtered out of your blood unless there's been damage to the little filtering units called nephrons in your kidneys. Uh, if there is glucose found in your urine, that's uh, an indication you might have diabetes um, because your body's unable to regulate your blood sugar. And if it spikes and you have a huge, large concentration of glucose in your blood, uh, some of it will get filtered out and end up in your urine. If you have normal amounts of glucose in your blood, um, none of it should end up in your urine. If there are microbes, bacteria found in your urinalysis, that's an indication that you might have a urinary tract infection. Uh, if there are red blood cells, so uh, basically you notice that your urine is red, right? Um, so you like go to the doctor, like I'm peeing blood, what's going on, right? Um, what the doctor will find when they do a urinalysis would be red blood cells in there. Uh, and that could be an indication of renal disease. Remember, renal means kidney, or could be an indication that you have kidney stones that are um, dam you know, damaging some of your kidney tissue. Uh, and then finally, if white blood cells are found in your Urine, that is another indication of maybe an infection in your kidneys or an infection of other urinary organs. They would not be filtered out through the nephrons, but they could be in your kidney tissue. They could be within your ureters or urinary bladder or urethra and end up as part of your urine. And again, that's an uh, indication of some kind of infection somewhere in your urinary system. So that is where I'm gonna to stop today. I hope you all appreciated the background color I chose for our urinary system lecture. Um, and I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. And um, I will talk to you guys again sometime, hopefully very, very soon.